Here's what's ahead on this edition of Animal Outtakes. A community torn apart by Hurricane Milton is picking up the pieces. And we visit a few Suncoast animal sanctuaries to find out how they weathered the storm. Zero casualties was the goal. At Love Life Animal Rescue and Sanctuary, survival mode is still underway. It's like all one large day at this point. I have slept maybe 10 hours in the last seven days. What lies ahead for this nonprofit? And at Farmhouse Animal and Nature Sanctuary, the storm cleanup is ongoing. We've um, survived through Irma, Ian, Nicole was very small, uh, Debbie gave us quite a bit of flooding, Helene, and now Milton. And how the community is coming together at 16 Hands Horse Sanctuary. How this nonprofit is trying to help others, even despite their own troubles. This and much more straight ahead on Animal Outtakes. Love Life Farm Animal Rescue and Sanctuary is a 10-acre nonprofit located in Mayaca, Florida. They rescue, rehabilitate, and rehome farmed animals in need. We stopped by to find out how they fared during Hurricane Milton. I could feel the wind coming from underneath the house, and I had the worst motion sickness, and I swear I threw up for six hours straight <laughs> between this dress, and literally the house was moving. And the windows were boarded up. I couldn't see outside. My phone was completely dead from all the water damage, so I couldn't tell what time it was. I couldn't reach out to the outside world to see how much longer the storm was going to be annihilating us, it felt like. But it's that crazy moment of like, you don't know if you're gonna make it and all you hear is trees snapping and things hitting the house and steel peeling off. And we couldn't even open the front door because the porch had broken and blocked the front of it. Walked around the sanctuary and yeah, there was a ton of damage. We had seven trees down, lost the porch, lost some lean-tos, lost most of our cross fencing. Um, so all 159 animals are just free roaming now. They're all trauma bonded together. I think we all are. So all the pigs that had never met before, oh, they met. <laughs> so now we've got a lot of, you know, bumped tusk marks and some ripped ears and some, you know, scratches and scrapes. But in the grand scheme of things, um, forced integration of all the <laughs> animals and everybody's getting along and it's, it's, sad to see all the hard work over the last two years of being at this specific property. All the fencing, all the coops, all the things that we've built, all the blood, sweat and tears we put into building these beautiful enclosures for the animals and in one storm they're all washed away but it feels calm and peaceful now, that calm after the storm where the animals are just grateful to be alive and to be here and to be out of the barn. <laughs> It's been <laughs> one of the hardest weeks of my entire life. <laughs> the f four days leading up to the storm, we were renting skid steers and moving dirt around for the places that we knew would flood um, so that we would have access to the new steel barn. Uh, we were picking up whatever pig houses and enclosures that we could that we didn't want to lose and trying to put them in safer spaces. Um, we were getting crates and cages ready um, to be able to lock up and secure all of the animals, to be able to move them to safer places out of the way of the storm, getting all of our medical supplies ready and handy for any emergencies, just going through our hurricane checklist. We were getting everybody ready to either put them in the steel barn, the wood barn, or our manufactured home. They're the only three largest structures that we have here at the sanctuary. And around 6, 6.15, we went into all the different barns and houses and started to feed the animals and a big gust of wind came and just blew the French doors right out of its frame. Um, and thank God my friend James was here to volunteer to stay with me during the storm, because um, otherwise I don't think we would have made it. Um, he was able to get the French door back on the frame, um, and then all of a sudden the lean-to and the roof to the barn started peeling off. Um, I'm so sorry. <laughs> So in a split second, I had to decide. <laughs> I knew that I had to 
move the animals out of the way of the door that had just come off um, and try to get everybody up onto higher ground because we were already starting to collect water in the steel barn. Um, so I grabbed what other animals I could carry with my two hands and I ran into the house. And the second I got and shut the door to the house, the porch started peeling away. And um, the last text message that my board of directors and my dad got from me before I dropped my phone in a puddle and it was donezo, said, the barn's not gonna make it. We're not gonna make it. I wanna be cremated, not buried and any surviving animals promise they won't end up at auction. I love you. <laughs> um, and then we went five and a half days with no power, um, no running water, um, but our community and our volunteers and our people and donors and everybody has shown up for us tenfold this last week, bringing us supplies, bringing us water, bringing us gasoline for the tractors. It's been unbelievable and so awe-inspiring to know that the community has our back and we wouldn't have been able to do all of this and keep everyone safe without the support we've received so far. So I am eternally grateful <laughs> for every single person that's donated, every person that came I'm so sorry, <laughs> and helped us carry animals. I've been crying for a week. <laughs> like, these are happy tears at this point. I'm just so glad that everyone made it and that I'm here to tell the story. These animals, this sanctuary is my life and this captain goes down with her ship so you can't evacuate with 159 animals and where would we have gone? We can rebuild, we can't be reborn. So the goal was zero casualties no matter what we needed to do. The important thing is that we're here and we're gonna come back stronger than ever. If you'd like to help this sanctuary, you can log on to lovelifeanimalrescue.org. Coming up next on Animal Outtakes, piece by piece, the farmhouse animal and nature sanctuary is working to rebuild once again. That's next. Looking to get away for a few days, but nervous to leave your furry friend? Leave your worries behind. At Dante's Den, we offer safe and secure boarding options for your dog or cat. We know your pet is part of the family, so we provide a comfortable environment with experienced caregivers who offer personalized attention. We have a fully equipped medical facility, spacious accommodations, daily activities like swimming and agility, and staff is on site 24-7. Log on to dantesden.org for reservations. Welcome back. We are officially in our 12th year of programming here at Animal Outtakes. And through the years, we visited the folks at the Farmhouse Animal and Nature Sanctuary in Mayaca City, Florida. So we wanted to check in with them and find out how they managed through Hurricane Milton. And we are happy to report all of the animals did well. But the story is a bit like a broken record as it is for many in our area. More damage. They've got to repair their fence again and rebuild enclosures again and on and on and on. But that's what's so inspirational about people like Lisa and Dave Burns. They just keep going no matter the storm because for them, it truly is all about the animals. So we had a little bit of wind from Hurricane Milton, um, just like everyone else in our area. We have a lot of trees down, a lot of branches everywhere, fence down everywhere. Uh, we just installed new fence on one side of the property and quite a bit of that is damaged now. Um, we have two of our buildings that are leaking. Uh, there's uh, not, not a lot of major damage, but a lot of cleanup. We have 180 animals here on the property and we spent five days prepping. As soon as we heard it was coming, we started making sure all of our gates were in good shape, all of our enclosures were in good shape. Uh, we wrote our phone number on all of the animals that we could, on their hooves, on their bodies, uh, tortoises on their shells. So if any of the fence went down, any of them were escaped, we'd get them back. Um, we were very lucky, nobody escaped, nobody was injured. Um, we have a couple that are stressed still that we're dealing with. Uh, we have one that's chronic laminitis and all the mud has not been good for him. Um, but other than that, all the animals did very well. So these, both of these buildings leaked. Um, that one, the roof panels are lifted, but not terrible. Uh, it can be fixed. 
This is our new feed shed that we purchased with a grant right after Ian, and it, the roof leaked on this as well. Um, so that's, we have to address that because that's where we keep all the food and everything got wet. Um, but you can see back here, uh, one of the projects we've been working on is making an, an area that was easier and safer for the volunteers to get from one pasture to another with our feed cart or with the tractors. Um, and then this fence here just fell all on the, the walkway. We've um, survived through Irma, Ian, Nicole was very small, uh, Debbie gave us quite a bit of flooding, Helene, and now Milton. <laughs> it's been a very active couple of years. We've been working nonstop from sunup to sundown since the storm, um, just basically trying to clear up everything that we can because the animals need these pastures. They need to be able to, you can't keep a horse locked in a stall forever. He's got to be able to go out and graze, and the cow certainly isn't going to put up with being locked up. So we have to clear their, their areas pretty quickly. I do it for the animals and you know I also do it for Lisa and Dave. They are some of the, I don't want to choke up talking about them, but honestly it's very rare today that you actually find such selfless people um, who truly, truly care and have a passion for what they're doing. They love these animals so much. Um, they put them above everything. They're literally like their family. They are their family. <laughs> um, and so many of the animals here were, you know, abused or abandoned. And they have such a happy place here. And I think that all of us, if we can, should do a little something to those who dedicate their entire life to giving back. With FEMA, during Ian, we were told we are a non-essential business, so they will not help us. Um, if the main house would have been more damaged, they would have helped personal level, they, but they will not uh, replace our fencing or help with any of the damaged buildings. Um, we basically got nothing last time, and, and I don't believe we'll get any help this time either. We will try, um, but I don't believe we'll have any help. For us, we rely on donations, fundraisers, and grants. That's our main funding. Um, we are applying for a couple of disaster grants. Not sure if we'll get them or not because there's so many like us, so many nonprofits around the state that need help, and so many that are in a lot worse shape than us, and we were very blessed. Um, but yeah, we will be pushing fundraisers and asking for donations, and, and so far we've had some of our regulars uh, donating to help with cost. We've had people uh, buying things off our wish list for us, uh, bringing out vegetables for the animals, because uh, we can't get to a store. We're, not, <laughs> we're just too busy to be able to leave, and um, so we've had people bring stuff like that for us. Yeah, the horses definitely act differently. Um, the donkey gets very upset. The goats, they just want to hide. They don't want anything to do with the water. Um, the funny thing is like our kangaroo, Powder, she loves storms and she will just stand out there in the field while it's raining with her face up to the sky and she loves it. It's cr it makes us very nervous because we can't get her to go in, <laughs> you know? But she did well. Um, these guys tend to stay out in the fields. We don't lock them in because you never know what will happen with a building. Um, so they have access. If they feel safe enough to come in, they will. Uh, Danny is our protector of the ponies and he will herd them around um, and keep them in an area where he thinks it's safe. And you're, you're always thinking what's next. It's almost like PTSD. It keeps <laughs> coming back. What's, when's going to happen again? From the gate, the front gate to about here was covered. We couldn't walk through it. We had to take everything out of the driveway first and then we started working on one uh, pasture at a time to clean up, but we've had a few volunteers able to get through and help. And, uh, we got quite a bit done, I think, so far. Half of that tree went down in Ian. Um, half of it went down with Debbie, I believe. It's already saturated from water and everything. And then the last of it went down today. But we're leaving the two big ones that are on the ground. Um, the goats love to climb on it, so those are staying. We'll just take off the one that's kind of dangerous. It really comes down to communities helping communities. That, that's literally, you know, um, we have to help save each other. We cannot give up. It has to keep going. I mean, these animals are relying on us. So we want to make sure we get it back up and running and safe for all of them. And we just deal with it. You, you have to look at the positive side of it. Our house is still standing. The barns are still standing. None of the animals were injured. Clean up the mess and keep working. If you'd like to learn more about this special place, 
go to farmhousesanctuary.org. They've got an Amazon list along with other ways you could help. Coming up after the break, lending a hand at 16 Hands. We visit a horse sanctuary that's helping others despite needing help themselves. Did you know Moat is helping restore depleted snook populations and has raised and released 30,000 of them into local waterways so far? The more you know about everything Moat's doing to help our oceans, the more you'll understand why Moat matters. Visit moat.org today. At 16 Hands Horse Sanctuary in Ona, Florida, their mission is to foster natural, compassionate relationships between humans and horses. They provide refuge for neglected, unwanted, and abused horses and burros. So of course, we were sad to learn the sanctuary was hit hard by Hurricane Milton. Thankfully, all of the horses made it through okay. But the damaging winds destroyed part of the roof to the barn and their event trailer, a total loss. But as you will see, that hasn't broken the spirit of the team at 16 Hands. We are at 16 Hands Horse Sanctuary. I started it in 2007, so we've been going for 17 years. And we rescue abused, abandoned, unwanted horses and donkeys, equines basically. And we're about 99% volunteer run. There's two employees. Well, on a daily basis, they come into the barn. All of them come in so we can look at them and you know, look them over, groom them if they need it. And then while they're inside, there's somebody usually um, grooming the pastures, you know, breaking up the manure so it doesn't stink and doesn't attract bugs. And like David's doing right now, he's putting hay out for them. He likes to hand deliver it. <laughs> so this is the brown herd, because <laughs> they're all different shades of brown. And this is the hardest herd for everybody to recognize when they're learning, because you come into a, a, a stable with 25 horses and you know you have to learn everybody. That's probably the hardest thing. They have all, uh, most of them have been owner surrenders couldn't take care of them, um, that the, the people had health issues, financial issues, the horses had health issues, any number of reasons. I, I, you know, I try to get them before they go to the auction or whatever. I don't, I don't buy from auction. I don't do the kill pen thing. I don't do the slaughter pipeline thing. I take them before they go through all that. They get to be horses and play and bite each other and do all the horse things that horses do. And we, the stalls are for our convenience, not to keep them in. They're in maybe an hour a day. And then in the afternoon, they come in again, not all of them, but, but about 10 of them come in for a second feeding because they need extra nutrition. In the past, I've always like gotten extra feed and hay supplies. And then I learned with Ian that that's not necessarily a good idea because I lost the hay and I lost the feed because the buildings were damaged. So. This time I'm like, we're just gonna trust that it will be okay after the storm and we're gonna use what we have. And, and it did work out very well because none of our food or hay got damaged. Well, some of it you can't get to because it's in a flipped over semi over there, but we still have it <laughs> and it's good. And then when this barn roof flew off, the hay inside there didn't really get wet. So that was a blessing. Um, and it's just half of the roof, it's not like the whole roof came off. So I try to look at the positive side of it, you know, that it's all fixable. None of the horses got hurt, no people got hurt. So, and we have amazing volunteers that come and help us fix everything up. And I do have a savings account for emergencies, so I can do that. And um, we were blessed with a hay and feed grant before the hurricane came. And then when, um, uh, Dancer's Legacy is a, is a um, foundation that supports rescues. And then Front Range Equine is a, a rescue that is associated with Dancer's Legacy and they gave us a grant also. So we're able to fix our roof and not cut into our feed supply due to that grant. So I'm waiting for my hay guy 
to get a tow truck out here to lift up the hay trailer and then um, we're gonna have to, I don't know, fundraise for a new event trailer. And I've kind of put a moratorium on taking them because I'm getting a little older and 25 is a lot if nobody shows up to help me on a day, right? <laughs> this barn is like a beast. We lost some flashing on the end, but that's it this time. And it's been through several hurricanes. Gracie stays in during the day because she's old and it takes her all day to finish her, her meal. She's our oldest at 36. She makes a big mess. She drools a lot, but she's cute as a button. I haven't noticed anything prior to the storms, really. Um, but afterwards, they they are a little shell shocked, little you know, slower to respond. Um, I had one, my personal horse, Foxy, right here. She went down in the pasture, laid down, fell down. I'm not sure which, but she, we couldn't get her up. Um, and she laid there for at least three hours. Had the vet come in and he was dealing with other emergencies, so it took a long time. So it was the same thing as with Milton coming, you know, is he ever gonna get here type thing. Um, but we were discussing all the options and said, well, maybe, maybe she just can't physically do it because she's in her thirties, you know, and we'll probably have to put her down if she can't get up on her own. And about three minutes later, she jumped up and toddled off and said, it's not my time yet. Foxy girl. I'm offering hay to anybody that's been impacted by Hurricane Milton or, or Helene, and they need hay for their horses to, to get them through the tough time. I'm gonna run up to my feed store and grab some hay and feed and hay cubes and stuff like that, and uh, that'll be here too. And then I'm, hopefully people will come out and partake and take care of their ponies. Part of our mission is to help people in the community. And I figure we're in a good position right now, um, the barn roof aside and the semi-trailer on its side, um, to be able to help. And I, and I think it's the right thing to do. And since we got the hay and feed grants, it's just the right thing to do. People need help. I've been in the same situation many times where I you know, was scared that I wouldn't have enough feed or hay or whatever. So. It's a good thing. So we're going to try to do what we can. If you'd like to help this sanctuary, you can find more information out on their website, 16henshorsesanctuary.org. And we'll be right back. Animal Outtakes is produced by Dante's Den Foundation, a nonprofit group dedicated to creating the best life for dogs. If you would like to learn more about Dante's Den, donate or volunteer, visit our website, dantesden.org. And we're happy to report that here at Dante's Den in Mayaca City, Florida, well, we weathered another storm. We did lose a barn completely. We lost fencing and, of course, trees were strewn everywhere. But the dogs, they were perfect. And, of course, I have a marvelous staff that stays up here throughout the entire storm. Each one takes a building and they administer to the dogs the entire time. And we're very, very fortunate with the construction of these buildings here at Dante's Den. They sit up eight feet high. They were built to the new hurricane standards. And actually, the dogs snoozed their way through Hurricane Milton. If any of you should find yourself in that situation again where we've got a hurricane coming straight for us, you can bring your dogs up to Dante's Den. We do have special dens set aside for before the hurricane and recovery afterwards, and we are happy to help. We hope you had fun and learned a thing or two along the way. We'll be back here again next week with even more animals and some engaging encounters. Until then, thanks for watching.